Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over some gas diffusion and diffusion practice problems. Let's start off with the definition of diffusion and effusion. Diffusion is the process of spreading out. As you can see the picture here, when we take the partition out, the gas is spread apart. Effusion, on the other hand, is the process of passing through a small opening. So we had a, a partition with a small opening. Effusion is the process of the gas molecules going through that small opening. The rates of effusion and the rates of diffusion are affected by temperature directly. So that means if you increase the temperature, the molecules will move faster. So they'll be effusing more quickly and also effusing more quickly, essentially because they're moving more quickly. And it's inversely related to the molar mass. Heavier molecules will move slower than lighter molecules. So lighter molecules will be able to diffuse and effuse more quickly than heavier molecules. Now let's get started with our example problems. The first one, rank the following gases in the order of increasing rate of effusion at 30 degrees Celsius. Well, we talked about there's two factors that affect the rate, the temperature and the molar mass. The temperature is constant, all the gases are 30 degrees Celsius, so we just have to look at the molar mass. The rate of the rate of effusion is inversely related to the molar mass. So let's first figure out what the molar mass of each of these gases are. I'm going to write them right here. This is 16, this is 64, 44, H is about 4, and then H2 is about 2. If you're having difficulty determining the molar mass of a compound, just take a look at my video about how to do that. So now that we have the molar masses, Lighter molecules will move faster and heavier molecules will move slower. So we're ranking in terms of increasing rates. We're supposed to, we're going to start with the slowest rate, which is the molecule that has the highest molar mass, and that's going to be SO2. So SO2 will be the slowest. Then it will be the, the next heaviest gas, which is CO2. So CO2 will be a little faster. And then CH4 will be a little faster. Then HC, and then lastly H2. Next question. Actually, next concept is Graham's law of effusion and diffusion. We can actually compare the rate of one gas to the rate of another gas by using Graham's law with this equation that the rate of effusion or diffusion of one gas divided by the rate of the other gas is equal to the square root of the inverse of the molar masses. So notice gas one is on top here, but is on the bottom inside the square root. Now let's take a look at some problems that apply Graham's law. The first Question. A container contains O2 gas and H2 gas. Which gas diffuses more quickly and how many times more quickly? So first we have to de determine which gas is going to exit that con that small opening more quickly. Well, that's just inversely related to how, how heavy the gases are. So lighter gases move more quickly, heavier gases move more slowly. Let's take a look at the molar masses. O2's molar mass is 32 and H2 molar mass is 2. So since O2 is lighter than H2, it means that O2, sorry, H2 is going to effuse more quickly than O2. Then to determine how many times more quickly, we can use Graham's law. So we can write rate of H2 divided by rate of O2 equals the square root of the molar mass of O2 divided by the molar mass of H2. So notice how I, I switched it, H2 is on top and it's on the bottom. Now let's plug in the numbers. The molar mass of O2 is 32 and the molar mass of H2 is 2. 32 divided by 2 is 16, so square root of 16 is 4. That means that H2 is going to effuse four times more quickly than O2. Next question. It takes 225 seconds for one mole of xenon to effuse through a tiny hole. Under these same conditions, how long would it take one mole of neon to effuse? So here we're comparing xenon to neon, and then we're comparing how, how quickly they'll exit. So let's set up Graham's law. Since, since we're comparing the, the rates, we should set up Graham's law, so let's set that up. We'll, I personally like to put the faster gas on top which is the lighter gas and the heavier gas or slower gas on the bottom. Let's take a look at the molar mass of any and, and XC. So any's molar, neon's molar mass is about 20.2 and xenon's molar mass is about 131.3. That 
that means that neon is going to be quicker than xenon. So I will write rate of neon on top divided by rate of xenon equals the molar mass of xenon divided by the molar mass of neon. Now let's plug in the, the molar masses. Molar mass of xenon was 131.2 and then molar mass in, of neon is 20.2. So that would give us approximately square root of 6.5, which is approximately 2.55. That means that neon, neon is gonna effuse 2.55 times more quickly than xenon. So if xenon took if xenon took 225 seconds, then that means neon will be 2.55 times less than that. So it'd be 225 divided by 2.55, which will equal 88.2 seconds. And let's double check if that makes sense. Xenon, which is heavier, if you st drew the hole in 225 seconds. Neon, which is, which is significantly significantly lighter exited through the hole at 88.2 seconds. Let's take a look at one last question. An unknown gas diffuses 1.66 times more rapidly than CO2. What is the molar mass of this unknown gas? Before we jump in and solve for this question, let's think through this through conceptually. Would the molar mass, would the, this gas be lighter than CO2 or would it be heavier than CO2? Well, it, it was moving more quickly, so it has to be lighter than CO2. We'll set it up, so then we'll call it the unknown gas X, so rate of gas X equal, or divided by rate of the CO2 equals the molar mass of the CO2 divided by the molar mass of the gas X. It says that gas X is 1.66 times faster than CO2, so that means the rate of X divided by the rate of CO2 will be 1.66 equals to the square root. We don't know what the molar mass of X is, so we're going to keep that the unknown molar mass of X on the bottom, but we do know that the molar mass of CO2 is 44.01. Then we can just solve for the molar mass of X by first squaring both sides to get rid of the square root. And that'll give us 2.7556 equals 44.01 divided by the molar mass of X. Then we can just switch these, cross multiply and divide. Then we'll get molar mass of X equals 44.01 divided by 2.7556. Enter that into the calculator and we'll get that the molar mass of X it's approximately 16 grams per mole, which is consistent with what we originally thought. This, is, this matches the expectation that this gas is going to be lighter than CO2 because it's moving more quickly. So there you have it. We just covered four examples of gas effusion and diffusion problems. Just to summarize the main points, here you have the definition of diffusion and fusion. The main thing you need to know is that both of these rates are affected by temperature. If, you have, if it's, the temperature is higher, it's going to be faster. If it's slower, it's going to, if it's lower, it's going to be slower. And it's, the rates are inversely related to the molar masses. Heavier molecules will move slower and lighter molecules will move faster. And if you have to compare the rate of two gases, then just use Graham's Law. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry. If you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Acing Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.